So in today's video, we'll be going over creating this very sleek looking metal shader, especially focusing on these ridges and the anisotropic effect of the principled BSDF shader. And it has these very nice light streaks going in every direction, which is typical for these types of metals. Uh, and it's perfect for creating modern day products such as the Logitech headphones I'm wearing right now. We will be covering it for both Cycles and EV. And for starters, we are going to hide everything and add in a new cylinder and start off fresh. I'm going to give it 128 vertices. And I'm going to hit right click, shade smooth, go into the object data properties and enable auto smooth. Now let's scale this up on the Y and X axes. So hit shift Z to disable the Z axes. Apply the skill and add in a bevel modifier. With that done, add in another bevel modifier and set this one to a very low number. So something like a 0.01 and set these segments to three. And now we have a nicely beveled um, cylinder there. I'm just going to duplicate it, scale it up a bit and move it down uh, and apply the same matte plastic material, which is just basically a black shader with a roughness of 0.65 and that's it. But that's not what this video is all about. Let's create our metallic shader. So I'm going to add in a new material for the main cylinder here, and which I'm going to call uh, an isotropic metal. Obviously, we are going to start by cranking up the metallic to one. Now, if we just increase the base color slightly and we add the anisotropic value to one as well. We have the very basic anisotropic metal look. Now to me, this already looks pretty cool. However, we're far from done yet. So um, we can also change the anisotropic rotation, uh, which will add some of the rotation on the sides, which is perfect for creating something like a aluminum can, which has the same effect going uh, top to bottom. So uh, that's great. However, for this specific video, I will leave it at zero. And now let's focus on creating the ridges up top. So let's start off by adding in a wave texture and let's add in a bump node. Plug the bump node into the normal slot and the wave texture into the height of the bump node. And this will add some uh, lines in your render. Now this doesn't look too good just yet. And that's because we're on bands and let's change that to rings. And somehow this will look even worse. And that's because we need to map this. So let's hit control T which is a node wrangler feature. So make sure to go into preferences, add-ons and enable the node wrangler add-on. So with the mapping and texture coordinate nodes, let's change it from generated to object and change the uh, wave texture axes from X to Z. And this will already look pretty good. Um, however, it's not perfect just yet. And that's because we need to set it to spherical. Now this will create a skill difference going from the uh, most inward position to the outward position, which we can fix by tweaking the mapping node. So I'm just gonna go into view shading here and we are going to change the Z skill to zero, which will evenly distribute our rings. Now the issue still persists with them being on the side uh, of the object. And we now need a mask to tell the object where to uh, apply the bump and where it shouldn't apply it. So let's work on that real quick. Let's first set the strength of our bump to 0.1. And let's change the wave texture skill to 15 and make sure all the other settings are set to zero. So there's no strange artifacts. All right, so with that done, we're going to change the bump to 0.5 uh, just for uh, visual purposes right now. And let's add in a mix RGB node. Now let's set the color two to black. And what this effectively does is gives us a mask. So uh, left will mean bump and right will mean black, which basically means no bump. And now we just need to tell the factor here where to apply the mask. And we can do that by adding in a gradient texture, a color ramp, and another mapping node. Plug these into each other and plug the object coordinate into the factor of the mapping node and take the color ramp and just visualize it by control shift clicking on it. Now let's change the color ramp to constant. And if you just move this white value now, you will see it's there and we can rotate it on the Y axis by 90 degrees to make it face upward. And we can change the white value now, move it all the way to the right, something like a 0.99 or so. And this will give us a mask effectively saying, okay, the black part is one and the white part is the other. So if we now take this color ramp and plug it into our mix node, uh, we can use it as a mask. So let's just take it over here, plug it into our mix node 
and now control shift click on our principled psdf and it should take a minute and there it is so it's effectively doing what we want but it's inverted and that's because white basically now means reflective and black means uh show bump so let's just flip it and set the black value to 0.99 and that should fix this issue now we have these ridges up top and all the other parts are well just plain metal now the next part is very important and this is the roughness of our material so I want the sides to be reflective and I want the top to be more rough uh, for the more anisotropic effect going there. So let's just add in a few new nodes here. I'm going to add in a color ramp and plug it into the roughness first of all. And I'm going to add another mix RGB node and plug it into the color ramp. Now we're going to take the wave texture and plug it into color one. Uh, which effectively says, okay, the top part, we are going to use the wave texture. Now let's take the mask and use it for the factor again. And let's change these color ramp colors, which are basically roughness values. So I'm going to change the black value to something like a 0.084 and the white value can go to 0.5. And now I want to take the color two, which is the sides of our object. And I want to change this from completely reflective, so uh, zero. And I'm going to change this to 0 0.084 as well. Just giving us a slightly rough metal, which I think looks more natural than fully reflective metal. And if we are going into render view now, we get this result. And I think it's starting to look really nice already. We get the nice reflections on the side, but the top part is more rough and anisotropic. So we are going to duplicate these two nodes and plug them into the base color. Take the wave texture again, plug it into color one. Take the mask color ramp and plug it into the factor and set the color two to something like 0.35 or so. And finally, let's take the darker color of our color ramp and make it slightly lighter. So 0.25 will do. All right, so that's the complete anisotropic metal shader set up in cycles and it's looking very cool uh, if you ask me. This is the complete node setup. So pause the video here if you want to follow along with these. Now let's add in the text object that I had uh, going through the top, which is fully reflective as well, creating some nice rim light. I'm just gonna add in a new text object here, which I'm gonna center. So in the alignment of our text object, set both of these to center. Now I'm choosing a font, which is my brand font. And in this case, I'm gonna pull it up until it's slightly below the top of our object here. Now let's go into the geometry here, extrude it ever so slightly until it sticks out and add a bevel of like 0.02. Uh, Pull it down until the bevel lines up there and set the bevel amount to zero so you get a nice camphor going there. Now you can type anything you want here and I'm going to type subscribe and this is a great moment to point out that if you aren't subscribed yet then please do so now. It helps out the channel a lot and you get my eternal gratitude. Okay so with our text in there let's just add in a quick shader for this one. Add in a new shader, new material. And I'm just going to call this one metal. And basically it's just the metallic value to one, the roughness to 0 0.084 as well. And um, you're done. Basically, that's it. We get these nice rim lights and I'm just going to increase the base color ever so slightly. And I think this looks very neat uh, and gives a cool, like it's almost a polished effect going for the letters as well. So that's actually the complete cycles uh, shader done and let's take it into Eevee and see how everything looks. So first of all right off the bat it doesn't look too bad and that's all because of the bump node so basically the wave texture. Um, this will create enough geometry, fake geometry of course, um, to generate sort of a similar effect. However, it still looks way worse than it did in cycles and we can fine tune it. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do a an isotropic metal setup within Eevee. So let's just duplicate our material. I'm just going to rename this one an isotropic metal Eevee. Um, and let's delete the base color nodes. So the mix RGB and the color ramp. Now let's detach our uh, roughness and bump there. And now we're back in our basic metal shader. And if I crank up the anisotropic zero to one or anisotropic rotation, nothing's happening. So this basically shows you that this does not work within Eevee. So how can we fix this? It's actually not that hard. First of all, let's add in a tangent node, then a Fresnel. Plug the tangent into the Fresnel and set the IOR to 1.1. Take another mix RGB node, plug the 
Brunel factor into the factor of the mix RGB and set the mix RGB into the base color. Now, if we take color one and differentiate it from color two, we get something going. So if I take color one and make it darker, we get this nice anisotropic effect again. It does look different from the uh, cycles version. However, it is in fact functional and works from every angle. So we can work with this. Now let's reattach our roughness and our bump. And this already made it look way better than it did before. So um, the only thing you will notice is there's no uh, orange light reflecting in the uh, anisotropic effect here. And we can fix that by taking the lighter color and setting it to a orange tint, effectively mimicking the light falling on there, creating this orange anisotropic effect. And it does look really good. However, um, it's not completely accurate because there's no orange light for shining from this direction, creating this effect basically. So in still renders, it's perfect, but in animations, it could look strange. So let's just keep it on the simple gray color for that. So this is the basic setup for the EV anisotropic shader uh, metal. I've made sure I've got the bloom and screen space reflections and ambient occlusion on for better results. And this is the final result for the cycles metal. So uh, you see it up the screen right now. And this is the same metal with the EV shader. In my opinion, it looks worse than it does in cycles. However, it has its own advantages, especially for lower end PCs, because it's way easier to render and way faster as well. So that wraps it up for this video. I'm curious to hear which you think looked better, EV or cycles. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, then please leave a like, subscribe or comment down below. Also, I want to point out that the project files for this video are available on my GoMroads for just $2. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.